Hi, this is Abdul Bharti and welcome to this episode of TFR Newsroom. And today we have once again Frank Jablonski. You are VP of Global Marketing at Sios. First of all, welcome to the show. Thank you, Swap. Pleasure to be here. Uh, how would you define high availability? What does it mean and how is it different from redundancy or data recovery or data production? So, so to me, the big thing about high availability is the fact that uh, it identifies an outage and immediately fails over to another node in the cluster. So what this comes down to is that there is absolutely no data loss um, because the data is the same on both systems and that the recovery time, the time it takes to do that failover is as short as possible. It's usually a couple of seconds depending uh, on the application could be uh, as much as a minute or so. Um, you know, depending on everything that you have to fail over. But the idea is to make it as um, uh, unobtrusive as possible to the user. So they may just see a, a lack of, of a reaction for a short time period, and then immediately they start working again, and they haven't lost any data. Disaster recovery is very similar, except that because it's a greater distance, there is a potential for a slight amount of data loss um, should something locally go down, um, and then the failover will take a little bit longer to orchestrate as well. But with our software, we've designed it so that we understand these applications, and we know what to keep track of and how to keep track of it and what order to start things up in so that they're the most efficient. We try to avoid having to do a database uh, um, check, for example, because um, that process can really add a lot of time to a failover um, or disaster recovery process. So we want to try and avoid that as much as we can so we know the right things to um, to manage there. If you look at uh, high availability, traditionally people would think about, you know, I mean, SIOS has been around, as you said, more than 20 years. Uh, there are a lot of mission-critical applications, you know, whether airlines or banking, all those things. How things are different in today's world where you might be just, you know, taking an Uber ride or Tesla, you're driving a Tesla car where things are actually even more critical because it's life and death situation. So what I want to understand from you is how has the whole, uh, uh, the world around high availability changed from the traditional world versus the modern world? That's an interesting question. Um, you know, I think as uh, businesses evolve, uh, and applications evolve, people become more reliant on those. Um, businesses that used to be open for 8, 10, 12 hours a day are now open 24 days, uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And they're doing business around the globe and they can't afford downtime, right? Downtime means, um, could mean as much as hundreds of thousands of dollars in, in lost revenue. Um, if you're a credit card processing company, for example, you have to have those systems available at all times for your uh, retail merchants. Um, if, if, you know, a recent customer of ours uh, is in the payment business, and so they have to have their application available in a variety of locations so end users can go and make payments on, say, their utility bills and things like that and, and have that uh, constantly available. So this is more and more important. Typically, people have had it in their own data centers, and so they control that infrastructure, and they've used the, the typical standard of, of a shared storage cluster environment to be able to manage that. Um, and as they go to move to the cloud, that, that piece of the tech stack changes. They, have, they don't have that shared storage, so they're forced to do something different and look around for other solutions. And you, know, you can craft your own solution, but now you're taking responsibility for all the pieces of it. And you've done all, you have to do all the custom scripting work for that. You have to understand all of the potential outage cases that could apply. You have to test against all of those. And it's a tremendous amount of work. It's a, it's a project that could take you several months to accomplish. And then you still don't know if you have missed something. You know, you, you could forget about one little piece. Um, and then when you have a, a need for a failover, it doesn't work. With our solution, we've tested all of that stuff. We've done all of this environmental testing. We understand these applications inside and out. And you're assured that with our solution in place, 
first of all, it's going to take you, you know, a very short amount of time, you know, maybe an hour or two to get it set up in your environment, not months. And you're going to be assured that it's going to work when you need it to, that it's going to identify all the outages that could occur and be able to recover from those. And it's going to be updated when changes happen to that environment, whether they be operating system or application versions um, or whatever, that we're on top of that and we're going to have those latest versions available to you so that um, you're not going to be caught by surprise by an outage. If you look at the whole IT landscape, you know, it has changed. Uh, containers are coming, then Kubernetes is a big word, then service mesh is there. Uh, serverless is there, function as a service is there. So from HA's perspective and the work that SIOS is doing, how do you look at this evolution of technology and how uh, does it create more opportunities for you or challenges for you? So to, to me, it creates opportunities because you need to look at where this market is going, what people are going to want to do. I think that a lot more people are going to look to do cloud native this coming year. Um, people have traditionally done the lift and shift of taking the existing environment and moving it to the cloud. And then uh, over time, they're going to look to do more and more to integrate with cloud technologies and, and change over to a cloud native approach. As they do that, you know, SIOS really becomes, um, you know, just, just an application in the cloud. And, and we're working with vendors that will just include us with their solution in the cloud. Um, so I think that whole shift is definitely coming and we need to look at how we would work in the Kubernetes and in container environments because um, those are the environments of the future in the data centers. Uh, it's Microsoft Ignite is going on these days. And if I am not wrong, SIOS made some announcements around Azure. So tell us a bit about that announcement first. It was, I think, one or two weeks ago. Yes, and, and and we announced the fact that we are now supporting both the uh, Azure environment as well as the Azure Stack environment. Microsoft has certified our uh, Data Keeper Cluster Edition high availability solution uh, for use in those environments. And this gives our customers the opportunity to continue to use their Windows Server failover clusters uh, in the uh, Azure and Azure Stack environments. Tell us a bit about Data Keeper. What does it do? So Data Keeper Cluster Edition is designed to uh, look just like shared storage to a Windows Server failover cluster. So what we're doing is we have high speed, um, low bandwidth uh, replication going on between the systems so that the Windows Server failover cluster sees the exact same copy of data on, on either system and, and functions just as if it had shared physical storage there. And, and uh, a lot of people may not realize that shared physical storage is not available in the cloud. So they really can't continue to use that if they go to lift and shift an environment that they have today into uh, any cloud for that matter, not just Azure. And what are the typical use cases or workload that would consume uh, Data Keeper? So uh, we work with all versions of uh, SQL, for it, for example. So SQL Server uh, 2008 R2 all the way up to 2017. Um, we support Windows uh, from 2008 all the way up to 2019 as well. Um, and of course, other applications that anything that you would really use a, a, a failover cluster for that you needed to have that high availability for a, a critical application, we support. And how do you actually ensure uh, failover or redundancy or whatever term you like to call there? So what we're doing is we're providing that uh, shared storage piece, right? So we're looking just like it's shared storage. So Windows Server failover cluster is actually doing all of the failover work, right? It's doing all of what you would expect a cluster to do, monitoring the applications and servers and services that are there. Uh, identifying a failure and initiating and, and orchestrating that failover to another node in the cluster. But if I'm not wrong, uh, SIOS is not the only player which is working in this space. So what makes your solution so, so unique? Why customers should use your solutions? Well, one of the things that, that makes us unique is that, you know, we've been in this business for 20 years. So our engineers 
All they do is focus on high availability and disaster recovery. And so we've designed our replication technology um, to be able to replicate that data synchronously between um, availability zones in, in the Azure cloud. Now, if you want disaster recovery, you replicate to another region, and that replication would be asynchronous only because of the distance there. But we don't impact the performance of the application at all. You replicate your data, and then the cluster works the way it needs to um, should a, an outage occur. What makes us unique is the fact that we've done this, we've tested all these environments, we've looked for all of the potential cases of failure, and we are ensuring that uh, none of those are going to cause an outage in your system. And plus, we allow our customers to continue to use their Windows Server failover clusters, which is a technology they're very comfortable and used to using. And, and what is the criticality? Why, why is it important or why is it critical for the users to use Data Keeper? Well, if you've got um, SLAs for high availability on-prem and you go to move that environment to the cloud because you want to take advantage of the cloud, the, the savings and cost and uh, some of the more uh, flexibilities to provide um, disaster recovery, then you can't do that with your existing shared storage uh, cluster configuration. You need to use something like uh, SIOS Data Keeper Cluster Edition to emulate that shared storage for Windows Server uh, failover cluster in the cloud environment. So this gives you the ability to maintain the same SLAs um, that you have on-premise in the cloud environment. And do you work only or exclusively with Microsoft Azure or is it multi-cloud, hybrid cloud solution? So we are a multi-cloud solution. We support the Azure environment, we support the AWS environment, we support the Google Cloud platform, and we support in between those platforms. So you could do uh, high availability between two availability zones in one cloud, and then you could use disaster recovery uh, in the, in another cloud. So you can fail over elsewhere if you need to. This also is useful if you need to move um, from on-prem to the cloud. You can set that up as your disaster recovery site in the cloud, replicate your data up there, fail over to the cloud, and then build out the environment in the cloud and continue to run. You've got your data uh, up there and ready to go. Right, And it's, uh, as you said, it's certified by Microsoft, right? Yes, it is. What is the importance? Why does it matter to customers that it is certified? Customers want to know that things are going to work. And when you get into the cloud, you have many different technologies in that technology stack that you're dealing with. And it's different. So they like the idea of being able to take what they have running in their on-prem environment today and just lift that up and move it into the cloud. And that they don't have to worry, things are going to continue to work the way that they expect them to. Well, that's not exactly how it works, right? Because some of that some of those pieces in that technology stack, like the shared storage, have to change. And that's where SIOS uh, can come in with, with uh, Data Keeper Cluster Edition to take over that and emulate that uh, shared storage to Windows Server uh, failover cluster. And this just this makes sure that things are going to work for customers. And to have Microsoft say that this works in our environment with our applications gives them a level of comfort. We have that same with the other platforms as well. And, and in that they've certified us as their as a, a, a high availability solution uh, on their platforms. Uh, so Thank you, Frank, for uh, not only explaining, you know, high availability in modern context, but also how SIOS is evolving as the market is evolving itself. Uh, and I look forward to talking to you again at some point in the future. So first of all, thanks once again for your time and uh, look forward to seeing you again. Thank you very much, Swapnil. Appreciate the conversation. Enjoy chatting with you. Look forward to it again as well. Mm -hmm.